So Amy, what did you get up to this weekend? Um, well, I went to the beach, I got stung by a jellyfish, but then I got peed on. You know that doesn't work, right? Hey guys, Julia and Amy here for G News. It's that time of year again when billions of blue blobs wash up on the shores along the west coast of the United States. But what are these blobs, and can we touch them? Those blobs are actually Valella Valella. No, not the team mascot for the Bulgarian national Quidditch team, but little jellyfish-like creatures also known as by the wind sailors. And they sailed all the way to the coast because of a bigger blob of warm water hanging out off the coast of North America. Dave Checkley, a professor at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, says that when warm water invades our part of the world, Valella commonly comes with it. These are not jellyfish, but they're in the same phylum, Nidaria, along with sea anemones and coral. Some species of Nidarians have been swimming the sea since before the dinosaurs. Some scientists think that they might even be the most ancient multi-organ animal. But they have no bones. They're just little gelatinous blobs floating happily through the seas. They look squishy and they're very stingy. Well, some species of jellyfish sting pretty bad, but the Valella's neurotoxins don't really affect humans. We mostly just feel an itch or a burn. By the way, why do other jellyfish stings hurt so bad? And why do they do it? I mean, come on, is it necessary? Well, most jellyfish are carnivores. They eat fish or some smaller species eat plankton and other tiny organisms. Stinging helps them catch their prey or fend off bigger things that might harm them. Every one of their creepy little tentacles has thousands of stingers. These nidoblasts contain harpoon-like cells called nematocysts that shoot out a little thread, injecting the prey with a paralyzing neurotoxin. These stingers can penetrate human skin literally in the blink of an eye, which can lead to red burning or itchy lashes if you get stung. Which leads me to wonder, the whole uh, ping on the sting thing, does it help? Well, science says it's not actually the best thing for a jellyfish sting. While urine is technically sterile, it might pick up some bacteria in the urethra on the way out, which could make the stinging worse and even infect the wound. Scientists recommend using vinegar, actually, with 5% acetic acid. If you don't have vinegar on hand, because, you know, that's usually right next to the sandwich bags and sunscreen in your beach bag, warm seawater can rinse the wound. Then pick or scrape off any remaining stingers you might find. There's so much more to jellyfish than you can imagine. Some species have complex nervous systems. According to a study published in the Journal of Experimental Biology, they don't look like ours, but they're more diffused throughout the organism. Another study published in the Journal of Current Biology describes how some species of box jellyfish have 24 eyes, two of which kind of look similar to ours. And there's one species of jellyfish that doesn't die. The scarlet jellyfish just rejuvenates. It cycles through phases. When it gets sick or injured, it sinks back to the bottom of the ocean, turns back into a juvenile stage called a polyp, and grows again into a medusa, the adult stage. Amazing. We have so much to learn from jellyfish. We've even sent them into space. Wait. Why would anyone send jellyfish into space? Trace has the answer in this video right here. Astronauts took jellyfish to up to the International Space Station to discover what would happen to these structures if the jellyfish were raised in zero G. Aside from the terrifying possibilities of jellyfish taking over the ISS, this is a pretty cool experiment. All right, guys, are you a jellyfish fan or do you think they're the creepiest ever? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back here to D News. We've got new episodes every day of the week.